It's kind of near and dear to um, everything that I do. And it is, um, it's crucial from my point of view and everything that I've written and everything that I've talked about, what I'm fixing to share with you and I'm fixing to share a little video. And it's from some of the best scientific minds in their field. And it's gonna talk about ego. And there's always a lot of controversy every time I bring that up. Everybody's got something to say about that. Everybody's got an opinion on it. Well, I think it's this, or I think it's that. So I'm gonna start with a scientific definition of what it is and what it looks like and the, and the ideas of these educated men about, about what it might really be. When you go into any kind of therapeutic treatment, you're gonna deal with someone that's going to catalog in the first discussion, all of the situations that may be going on in your life. And they will catalog that and they will determine how to address it. They will not address all of it at once. They will address it a piece at a time. And the large part of the success of your 12 step programs with regards to alcoholism and drug addiction and all the other things, um, that, that pattern there has one thing and one thing that's crucial about it. And that is reducing the idea of, no, you're right on time, Lane. Um, reducing how important we think we are. When we feel like we are more important than everything else, and I'm gonna tie all of this into the lore because when I think in those terms and I look at the lore, that's how I find the answers that I'm looking for. That's when I see these people may be known to something that we're missing out on. And I think it's time we do that because we still have people trying to define what it means to be folkish and trying to define what it means to be universalist and trying to define how much you need to know before you can call yourself also true. And all of these other extraneous definitions so that someone else might determine the quality of who you are in this faith. Um, I'm fixing to take that from them. It is nobody's business and no one can put a litmus test on the quality of how your faith works in your life. That's not any, nobody has that authority, power, or responsibility. The real determination of that is how good is your life? How good are you doing in this world right now? How are your fan, how's your family doing? How are your kids growing up? What are the people around you like? Show me the people, show me your best friends and I'll show you your future. I find myself surrounded by some very good people. There's a couple of floaters, a couple of turd floaters, but I like them because <laughs> anyway, they're a lot of fun. So I, you know, <laughs> I ain't that perfect. <laughs> I want to take all the fun out of it. Um, <clears throat> but when we look at the lore and we're trying to find out what all this means, where does it come from? How's the best way to interpret it? It's real easy to get lost in the idea of a strictly academic determination. A strictly academic determination fails to grasp some of the deeper concepts that go into it. We can go down a rabbit hole after rabbit hole of how this, the etymology of this word goes back here as from Scandinavian as opposed to continental kind of ideas on back to, you know, more Scythian and origination from the steppes as Deuce Prater originated and migrated and became two T's. T was in the North Star. Uh, yeah, there's a connection there. What does that do for your life right now? How does knowing all of that help you? What it does is it makes me feel more important than you because I know something you don't. It's just that simple. It doesn't change how I can relate to someone that's causing me pain. It doesn't change how I'm gonna put food on the table. It doesn't change how I'm gonna succeed in this relationship or that relationship, or be able to speak properly, or put money in the bank, or actually exist in this world that we find ourselves in. We can make all kinds of armchair observations and quarterback commentary about the failure of this, or the failure of that, or the plight of these people, or these people are the bad guys, or this government's doing this, or that government's doing that. Not one bit of it has any bearing on your faith in your home. That's the only place that you can truly enact what you think and what you believe. If you walk down the street spouting some of the nonsense that we talk about commonly, they might lock you up. <laughs> you might lose your job. Um, 
we have a long way to go. We have a big example to set. We have big shoes to fill. How do we do that? I hate the idea of humility because there's such a knee-jerk reaction to it in heathenry. Men that stand in front of their gods, so on and so forth, manly men doing manly things and beautiful women being shield made and, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's no place for humility in that. But there is a place for respect and reverence, perhaps. Maybe that's a term. Maybe it's something we should each come up with our own determination of. It's very hard to be grateful for the things that we've worked hard for and earned if, we, uh, if our ego keeps telling us, well, they really don't understand how important you are. You should really know something more. So I'm gonna share this video. And this, like I say, this is some of the best, and yeah, it does come from a movie. <laughs> it's the end credits for a, um, for a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. And these are some of the best scientific minds in their field. Let's see if I can get it on here so everybody can see it. So if we start from here, I'm going to bring it from here into our lore, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. Ego is the worst confidence trickster we could ever think, we could ever imagine. That word trickster is important. You don't see it. I am The problem is that the ego hides in the last place if you'd ever look within itself. It disguises its thoughts as your thoughts, its feelings as your feelings. You think it's you. People's need to protect their own. People have no clue that they're in prison. They don't know that there is an ego. They don't know the distinction. difficult for the mind to accept that there's some something beyond itself, that there's something of uh, greater value and greater capacity for asserting truth than itself. In religion, the ego manifests as the devil. And of course, no one realizes how smart the ego is because created the devil so you can blame some of it. In creating uh, this imaginary externality, we usually, usually made a, a real enemy for ourselves. And then it becomes a real danger to the ego, but that's also the ego's evolution. There is no such thing as an external enemy no matter what that was one perception and projection of ego as it is. That's really important to think about, and it's terrifying to think about as well. Even with Christianity, it's always been the fire and brimstone mindset. There's something going on. You've got to act right, or the bad guy's going to get you, or the bad guy's going to make you do it, or the devil's going to get you. And then you get in here, and sometimes 
once we go through a crossroads that's so brutal in our lives that we have to change, I mean, think about that. We're gonna, here I am walking along, I've tripped over my own dick, I fell on my face, lost everything. I'm gonna change, this sucks. I'm gonna change the spiritual foundation of my life and become something better. Think about how dramatic that is. Think about not having any notes to do that with. How often do we come in here and begin to give those same old thoughts and feelings? Maybe we give them a new coat of paint. Maybe I need something. Well, I need to feel angry about something so I can feel right. And then we get this academic idea going on. Well, I'm more right than you, and therefore I'm a little bit more important than you are, or I hate this group of people over here, or I understand that there's really the plight of the white man and blah, blah, blah. Okay. All I've done is taken something that I carried that brought me to a crossroads that like to destroy me and given it a new coat of paint. Now I have the right to be angry again. I have the right to be blah, blah, blah. Now I'm a fully empowered. I'm a heathen, powerful man. Okay. Now what? All we've done is given our ego a new coat of paint. When I say that, Think about your initial reaction to it. Oh, you can't say that. I don't believe that. What do you think is thinking about that? The presence behind the thoughts that are like birds chattering outside the window or the birds chattering outside the window? Which one is it? Our lore is this amazing thing. And I don't really care what people think about where it came from or who wrote it. It happens to be what we have. It's here because this is what we need for this time. Loki is that fine personification of what the ego really is. It starts with this killing of Balder. See, Balder took oaths, or Frigg took oaths for all of these things never to harm Balder. It says right here, Frigg took oaths to this purport that fire and water should spare Balder. Likewise, iron and metal of all kinds, stones, earth, trees, sicknesses, beasts, birds, venoms, and serpents. Pretty big list. And when that was done and made known, she didn't just do it in private. She went out and said, listen, y'all ain't gonna fuck with him. I'm just telling you right now, it's not gonna happen. It's like a big mama with a shoe in the neighborhood. You're not gonna mess with that kid. This is what we got going on here, right? <laughs> and when that was done and made known, she let everybody know about it. Then it was a diversion of ballers and the Aesir that he should stand up in the thing and all the others should shoot at him. Some hew at him, some beat him with stones, but whatsoever was done hurt him not at all. And that seemed to them all a very worshipful thing. So now this pastime of having fun, now they're standing there talking about how great they are. See all of these things, believe in me, go ahead and strike at me, have at thee, blah, 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 blah. This is a worshipful thing because this is a, this is a demonstration of our power and how great we are. But Loki Lofuson, when he saw this, it pleased him ill that Balder took no hurt. Think about somebody that's doing better than you. Who in the hell are they to be doing better than you? You've got two hands. You put your pants on just like everybody else. How come they're doing better than you? I'm over here struggling with all this stuff. Why? It kind of gets under your crawl, doesn't it? Gets under your skin a little bit. Well, I'm working twice as hard as these guys, and they're getting the same amount of pay as I am. Loki took a little ill that Balder took no hurt. That's the ego talking. It has absolutely nothing to do. It doesn't change anything about you. It's just one of those little thoughts that show up in a train of thinking that suggests, well, you ought to be worth more. Makes you want to strive to do something. Doesn't make you want to strive to do anything, but it just makes you want to sit there and be angry about it all. Why, those people, they, I don't know who the hell they think they're fooling with. I, by God, they ain't qualified to carry my water bucket. Oh, yes, sir, I'll get right to it. It's your ego talking. Whether anybody likes it or not, I got the best scientific minds in the world pointing out <laughs> that's what's going on. Not only that, I got an example in my lore of the same damn thing. He changed his entire appearance. He became something that he was not. He went to Fensalir to Frigg and made himself into the likeness of a woman. Sometimes if the ego isn't empowering itself, it'll do a flip switch on you and all of a sudden you're the victim. Poor me. They just, uh, I'm just not loved. I don't know what to do and I, I wish I could do more. Oh, poor me. 
flip side of the same coin, folks. That is not the full potential of the presence of who you are behind all of the thoughts we think. If you've ever done any kind of serious meditation, you'll understand what I'm talking about. That constant stream of thoughts that runs through our minds in a hundred different scenarios, embarrassing moments, painful situations, scary situations, that run through our minds, well, I could have, should have, would have done this, better that, better, I could have done this, I could have said that. Man, that's all producing a feeling, that's all producing an emotion, and your body doesn't know what your mind is thinking, it's not happening, it's flooding itself with chemicals. And we become every bit as addicted to those chemicals as we do a cigarette or alcohol or any kind of drug you want to use. And we were conditioned to do it from birth, watching our parents do it, shouting at the evening news, indulging in road rage, and all fighting with each other. It's all we know. What a wonderful thing that all of a sudden this awareness shows up in this, the greatest monuments of the ancient world that happened to come in verbal in word form. <clears throat> it changes into the victim. It takes the likeness of a woman. It's not, ma it's not masculine anymore, now it's feminine. Now it's a receiver. Then, okay, then Frigg asked if that woman knew that the Aesir did the thing. She said that they were all shooting at Balder and moreover, he took no hurt. Then said Frigg, neither weapons nor trees may hurt Balder. I have taken oaths of them all. Then the woman said, have all things taken oaths to spare Balder? And Frigg answered, there grows a tree sprout alone westward of Valhalla. It is called mistletoe, though I thought it too young to ask the oath of. Then straight away, the woman turned, but Loki took mistletoe, pulled it up, and went to the thing. Just like that guy said, the ego will do anything to protect itself. I have seen men drink and drug themselves to death, fight with the police, go to prison, go to all kinds of extreme links. They will become, and I, you've seen him, the kind of old guy that's off by himself. He's kind of mad and kind of pissed about shit. Maybe when FDR got elected or maybe when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, he's still kind of fucking mad about it. And he's off in his house by himself. You kids, get out of my yard. That guy right there is completely consumed by his ego. He will feed it on a daily basis by whatever he sees on the news. And we're looking at a way here that says, hey, uh, if somebody's doing good, uh, I don't know Trump. Some, there's gonna be half of the country that's feeding their egos, hating on either one of them. And not much of it's gonna have a single thing to do with you putting food on the table. <clears throat> and what's that look like in heathenry though? So, Loki can't stand that this guy's doing better than him. How hard is it when you're working next to somebody, let's say you're working on an assembly line, let's say you're working on a construction job site. You guys are hitting nail for nail, you're making assembly for assembly, you're doing this, you're doing that, and all of a sudden they come up and they give that guy a promotion and a dollar fifteen hour pay raise, and they don't really give you anything. So you know we really like your work. That's that's kind of hurts. I really ain't no other way to put it. That shit kind of hurts. Wait a minute, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> if he's got a good attitude, he's always going to get it. If you're sitting there bitching about it, complaining about everything at work, if you have negative attitude, if you're completely ruled by the idea why these people ought to treat me better and they ought to don't even know who I am, you're not going to ever get to where that guy is who's grateful for everything that shows up in his world. Loki is unable to be grateful for the things that happen in his world. He's always trying to create some kind of problem because while they ought to understand who I am, they ought to know I'm, I'm Odin's wish son, I'm chosen. <laughs> but he won't embrace the ideas he needs to of personal growth like all of the other divine beings do. Tyr sacrifices a hand for the well-being of the community. Freya does what she needs to do to gain the, uh, the Brisingam engine, the fires of human inspiration. Odin wanders, he sacrifices an eye, he hangs himself on the tree to rid himself of the ego, brings himself to the edge of death to get rid of that ego that caused him to hurl a spear and begin the first great war. <laughs> when the love of gold entered and ruined the golden age of Asgard, 
uh, I'll have some of that. I should have more. That's all an ego. That's simply a thought process, a perception of ourselves that tells us we're greater than everyone else around us without ever having to do anything about it. And Loki is that fine example of it. So what does he do? He does what any kind of ego that's threatened will do. He takes a shot, but he does it the most unique of ways. See, he doesn't really want to be a victim because he knows they'll whoop his ass. So we talk somebody else into it. This is the threat of the Pope. Loki is also a fine representation of the Pope and the threat of Christianity. Speaking to the uh, Hoder stood outside the ring of men because he was blind. So the blind, the crippled, the outcast, the poor, the downtrodden, they're going to listen to someone that tells them, you are great and blah, blah. Loki's approached the one that's outside the circle, the blind one. Why dost thou, now, why dost thou not shoot at Balder? He answered, because I see where not Balder is. And, and for this also, I am weaponless. You'll give a blind man a blade, let him run around willy-nilly. So he's something less of a man, isn't he? Now all of a sudden, this guy's over here talking to him. He hasn't done anything. He's giving him hope. He's giving him this false hope. <laughs> he's going to get something done. Then Loki said, do thou also after the manner of other men and show Balder honor as the other men do. So we have this being who is a fine representation of everything the ego is, this I am great because I think I'm greater than you thought process because I know something you don't, blah, blah, blah. He's going to go whisper in the ear of another guy. He's driving the getaway car. Somebody else is going to take the shot. This is the ego talk. This is Loki. This is the representation. This is something also we need to be paying attention to. What are we being told? What are we being told as if it's valuable that we might need to listen to because, well, I feel bad. I, this, he's my enemy. He should be your enemy too. That's the leg in the room. That's the whole reason for the Reagan's mom. Reagan brought up Sigurd. This boy he knew to be a hero, we're told he is a powerful and mighty wizard and older and cunning, and he takes Sigurd under his wing and teaches him to raise it. And the whole time he's growing up in his teenage years, he's telling him all these stories about how Fafnir stole his treasure and how he killed his family and how he was betrayed and how he's downtrodden and how he, he's, he's my enemy and I, I love you and you should love me and that should be your enemy too. And there's blah, and it keeps on going and it keeps on going till finally Sigurd does go out there and slay Fafnir, and in that discussion, he finally realizes that fucking dragon didn't do anything to me. The dragon that Sigurd slays in the Fafnir Small is not Fafnir. It is all of the things that were put into his head as he was growing up about who his enemy might be. That's the great. That's when he learns the language of the birds when he tastes of the heart of this fallen enemy, when he understands all of this stuff we're told about who should be our enemy, who should we should hate, what we should be against, what we should be for, why? There's no reason we shouldn't be able to ask, why? What's that stop me from putting food on my table? Does that stop me from raising my children as I see fit? There are legitimate threats, folks. There are, there are people definitely lined up to stop us from doing what we want to do. But if we act in the same fashion that Logi does from a tirely and entirely egotistical position based on the threat of, they'll take our jobs, bullshit, we will always lose. If the entirety of the foundation of what we believe resides on the threat or the perceived threat or the perception of struggle, we will never achieve the kind of confidence and hallmark of a solid foundation of faith that this was for literally millions of people for thousands of years that we need to do today if we are to become anything more than a footnote in the annals of history is build and work on ourselves and recognize 
If someone's telling you something and getting you all fired up about who to hate and why, and this is going to, well, they're, they're, they'll take our jobs and they're going to take your guns. And <clears throat> if you don't have what it takes to separate yourself from a train of thought that's centered around you being a victim or how great you're going to be when it's time to rise up, you're missing the boat on the entirety of this faith. See, that's the real trick there is what this ego tells this broken, downtrodden, what the ego tells the individual who is hurting, who is alone, who doesn't know where to be, who feels he's, he's, he doesn't have any hope. The ego tells Hoder, tell you, go ahead and take that shot because it's a most worshipful thing. Says who? There's nothing. Nothing more dangerous in this world than half truth. You can have somebody all, all day long is nearly the damage as a half truth. And I see half truths running amok amongst our folk, inspiring passions and egos against things that have nothing to do with you becoming someone who is capable of to the thoughts running through your there are so many birds chattering outside the window understanding the presence of who you are behind that thought process. To build our homes and our futures and see our future with our children, because that's all we have. We can't work with anything else. We have led with the team with so much of what we've been told by other men who are trying to convince us of who are, we lead with the chin and run off at the mouth and people lose their jobs and now we're doxxed and now we got this, and now we got that and Antifa says this and we've made such an ass of ourselves for so long, nobody's paying attention to that. Because we've let ego take charge of what is supposed to be a faith. <laughs> Odin hanging on the tree is the prime example of a deity, what it means, what it's like to burn away, to kill, to painfully eradicate, to grow past, get rid of that ego that controls so much of our automatic response. I suck at it. I saw somebody the other day bitching about Christianity on Facebook. Man, I got right in there. I was all over that nonsense. <laughs> I know some things. They ought to understand how important I am. I'm, before I was done typing, I'm like, you big damn dummy. <laughs> Bought right into it in a heartbeat, just like that. It's just that quick. We're trained to do it. We have no choice, man. We're fucking conditioned to act in a certain pattern. And you put yourself in some of the roughest time of your life, you're going to get conditioned to act in a certain pattern. And it's sometimes breaking that pattern is a scary thing. What happens to me if I stop believing all of this nonsense that Joe Blow is talking about what have I pay attention to Brian? What will I look like? What will I become? How will I be successful? Well, that's terrifying. What happens if you do make a million dollars? What do you look like? What will you become? What happens if you make 10 million? Well, you're going to be hanging out with a lot of people, aren't you? You're going to be hanging out with an entirely new collection of associates. I've said it a thousand times, and I'm going to say it again. <clears throat> We live in a world that could give a shit whether you cultivate your gifts, but the instant you do and become successful, they will break their backs to sit down and eat at your table. That is just the way it is. If we are ever going to get to the point, like say the Mormons have done, they were pushed out of every legitimate community from Pennsylvania all the way across the plains to the Rocky Mountains, every legitimate community in America, run them out of town. Said, get your crazy shit out of here. And in 150 years, they built those silicon slopes in Utah. They have, you are watching the birth of a new major faith, world faith, right here in the United States. It will rival the Vatican. It will rival Mecca. It will rival Hindus. Don't think that it won't because they're promised prosperity. See, we're not promising prosperity. We're saying, hey, there's a bunch of stuff here. We can change your thoughts. We can, I can show you how to be at peace. I can show you how to be successful. I can show you how to deal with grief. I can show you how to do all kinds of things. 
But the first thing we got to get rid of is the idea that I'm more important than you are because I know something or I think something that you don't. That ain't the case. Now, if we want to wrestle and you beat me, you're better than me. <laughs> but let's put a book report together and throwing that online to slander my name and grab some points for yourself. That ain't, that's not, no, you know, can we get past that? Can we grow up a little bit? Let's box, you know, <laughs> let's, do, let, let's go to the rifle range. Let's shoot. Let's have some target practice. Let's do something. Let's do something in the spirit of real competition. <laughs> because I got to tell you, man, it, the real moment of truth for me with all of this came when I was about 23 years old. And I went to the Special Forces Assessment and Selection Course at the JFK Special Warfare Center in school outside of Fort Bragg. And I've been training and I've been running and I hadn't gone to PT Master Fitness Trainer course yet, but I do 94 push-ups in two minutes and 96 sit-ups in two minutes and run two miles in 13, 15, and I could hump a rucksack and I could do a 25-mile march. And I'll never forget, I was doing a timed five-mile run. And I looked up and realized, you're just middle of the pack, Brian. You're running so hard, you're fixing to puke. And these guys are ahead of you like world-class athletes. You're going to have to do better. And that's kind of where we are with our spirituality. We are competing against people and faiths and religions that have done this for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And we're sitting here trying to rebuild, reclaim this ancestral faith. We're going to have to do better than what we're doing so far. And some of that might mean taking a good long look at myself and saying, okay, am I speaking a truth that's going to help someone grow, going to help someone make it through a tough, am I doing something to help somebody become a better person or am I simply up here yammering my teeth so I can be more right than everybody else I happen to be able to do both so I feel pretty good about it <laughs> Melissa wasn't ready for that were you <laughs> but that's I mean so when I talk about these things and when you see me write about it this is what I'm talking about this death of the ego this this deeds not words kind of mentality it really means something you know there's really something to it am i getting stronger do my children love me do my grandchildren love me am i surrounded by good people that's what it's all about that's what it's all about when you find yourself in that situation and you look around at the men around you or in the women around you and you can smile because you know you would do whatever it takes <laughs> Man, you can't beat that. There's always going to be somebody sneaking around the edge of the crowd, making some shitty comment, or trying to get somebody else to believe that they're more right than the next guy and making some other shitty comment, not to help us move forward, not to help us move and become better and stronger and demonstrate everything positive that spirituality can become, but simply because they want to be more right. Just like Loki, whispering in the ear of blind Hoder to take a shot at the guy in the middle of the crowd. Once you can realize that, once I realize that, once I see that, you know, it becomes, it becomes real fucking hard not to bust them out. <laughs> I mean, it makes me mad enough to want to shit standing up a lot of the time. I would just like to go over there and grab him and say, hey, you ain't even on my level. Shut your damn mouth, blah, blah, blah. You know what that is? That's my ego responding to a perceived slight. And nothing changed about me. I didn't become shorter. I didn't lose any weight. I didn't lose any teeth. My hair didn't get any grayer or fall out. Not a single thing changed about me. But it's just like somebody cut me off in traffic. Whoo, come on, I'm ready to go. That pisses me off. I will lose my temper in a heartbeat. Then I got to realize, you big damn dumb son. Nothing changed. There. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot it's hard work guys it's just hard work and I got to be tougher on me than I can be on anybody else about this stuff I can't I can't break this for something that I can't do I can't expect mine to be better and show them what that means and there's a, I got a little I got <sighs> I have three girls 
and they're all as beautiful as as long. I got to be a better man, so pick her. The man to begin with. That's kind of important too. But that's my talk on ego. And that's why I believe the way I believe. And I know there's a lot of opinions on it. I know there's a lot of thoughts on it. But those men that were in that video at the beginning of this, it's the best scientific minds in the world in those areas and fields of expertise. Everything else probably going to be kind of an uneducated opinion. And that's just the real hard truth of it. If I look at my lore as men and women, as gods, as our ancestors, making the sacrifice, not because of spread out there, the sacrifice to make their community better, I see a real, real strong possibility in what we could become. They're not reacting to an outside threat. They want to become better because they give a shit about each other. And that's the way I'm always going to talk about it. That's the way I'm always going to feel about it. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to try to earn more money. I'm going to try to be the best dad I can be. I want my children to grow up to be That's a big change because 10 years, 15 years ago, Ain't no way in hell I want my kids to grow up to be like me. Hey, I feel good about that. I ain't always been able to say that. Because I've been a dirt bag in my life. It is what it is. It was beautiful ego. I hated to see it go. <laughs> but anyway, I'm done talking on all that. And uh, I just, you can tell I feel kind of passionate about those things. I see that as our real possibility for growth. I see that. We have here in this lore the potential to rival anything that's being put out here in the world right now that's changing the lives of people all over the world. We have what it takes right there. But at some point, we've got to step up to the plate. And say, I'm going to do this. It's good because I'm going to do this because that'll give me a chance to be that man. And they could have a brother who deserved to be loved. And that's what it's all about. All right, anybody got any questions? Anyone who want to bull bullshit? I don't have a question, but before everybody gets off here anyway, I wanted to uh, tell you guys all that John Helen Camp, who was part of the group on the Noble Minded Heathen, his wife went in today at 8 o'clock this evening to be induced to have their son, Ulrich. Um, but their little guy is going right to surgery after he's born. He's got some gastro problems. Wow. So they're going to, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly how that works, but he's got some issues. They know he's going right to surgery afterwards, and he's going to be in the NICU for a while. So I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, maybe if you guys can kind of think about him or kind of give him a shout out and check on him. Hopefully what's his name they're again? doing all right. I'm sure it's not easy. Huh? What's his, what's his name again? It's John Helen Camp. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. Reach out to him. Show him some love. Yeah. I know we thought Jeff was going to be retarded, but he was born, but he came out okay. We put him in the Niku. <laughs> yeah. He seems all right. <laughs> good. Good. And <laughs> um, he's in the uh, noble minded heathen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he usually he can, he gets on here when he can. So, but he's not going to be on tonight because of all that. Yeah, of course. I I, I know how that is. You know, uh, when my when my boy was born, he was he wasn't breathing when he was born. That was a big old scare for me because mm -hmm. uh, he he was the first he was the first child that I got to see born. You know, my firstborn I wasn't there for it. So, my second born son. You know, I was right there for it, and it was all just really emotional. You know, I cried. As you should be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I cried. I sobbed. I was a baby in there. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and I don't cry that often. So, I mean. Well, it's a good reason. It's a good reason to cry. Tears of joy. My yeah. first son was a C-section. I peeked over the curtain. 
And I heard him say uterine incision and I peeked over that curtain and he stuck his hand in her stomach in that incision and he pushed down her belly and yanked him out like it was a damn hat trick. And he was all purple and just, I was like, oh my God, what? The- <laughs> I had, I had issues with it, man. But then I saw it's a boy. I was like, yeah, we got it. Right. <laughs> if I yeah. have any more kids, that's probably how that's going to have to go. Yeah. Well, don't peek over the curtains, all I'm going to tell you. But <laughs> just don't, don't look, man. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> Sometimes leaving your life. things to mystery is okay. <laughs> right, that's I a little watch- mystery is good for the relationship. I'm just saying. I watch a lot of medical shows. You know. So I see a lot of that anyways. Well, it's a little different when it's your own person. True. And you know, that it was corn, man. I was like, I was like, are they hurting her? Do I need to punch this dick in the face? You know? <laughs> was, but then it's a baby and it was just this wild flurry of emotions. I didn't, really didn't even know how to, nobody, there's no instruction manual for that shit. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was, yeah, that was Darren. He came out purple as he could be. I was like, oh, my gosh, something's wrong. Yeah, my son had to stay in a little incubator for, oh, I think it was like a week. Yeah. yeah. Jeff had to do the same thing. He quit breathing. But anyway, that's – hey, uh, oh. I really appreciate everybody joining in, man. I, I, Will, it's good to see you, man. I like that San Francisco background. made me jealous. <laughs> I was about to say, man, that's a pretty interesting thing. I kept looking at it, and I was—I didn't know what to say. I was like, "Is he really out there screwing off?" Because <laughs> all I got is a little <laughs> screen of you. <laughs> so it's one of the Zoom. Heck uh, yeah, my check just hit. It's it's one Sorry, of the y'all. Zoom automatically offers as one of the uh, virtual backgrounds, and I just uh, my thumb actually just went across it, and I was like, "Eh, I'll go with it." Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> yeah. Dude, how do you, finally, do, how do, you finally, do that? So go in the settings and it has virtual background. You could actually set one from your um, your your pictures uh, in, on your phone, or um, you can also use one of the ones that they have. We'll just change the game. <laughs> <laughs> now nobody's gonna look like a person next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, dude. I don't, I don't healed up. I'm going back is on the game, in, man. Is that in Zoom itself? What's that? I'm back on the, I finally, my peck healed up. I'm back on the bench. I ain't doing anything heavy. I'm not going any over 225, but I'm finally back on there. I feel good about it, too. So I just posted a video myself saying um, after an injury, a shoulder, rotator cuff injury, stay light. That's the that's best thing you can do for yourself. That's what I, I've been – I've been, yeah. I've been, and that mace, I've been using the 10-pound mace. You would not believe what that will do for your shoulders, man. Oh, it's recuperative, huh? It is. It's made a world of difference. That's awesome. It is awesome. We have a good life. That's the thing. We got a good. Every, I think everybody here probably has a pretty good life. We got jobs. We can pay the bills. Yeah. And I've always been that way in life. <laughs> we can walk. We can talk. <laughs> That's it, man. That's what it's all about. All right, guys. I'm gonna get off here. Guy, enjoy your company. Thank you for jumping in on this, and and I really appreciate it. Y'all have a great, great Monday. Go out there, grab life by the nose, and whip its ass. <laughs>